Hello everyone. Here I am with inky fingers. I was fixing this pen and ended up having to take it apart and got ink all over me in the process. When I draw, I draw very fast, usually. You know, I want to I don't know how many lines I'm making per second or per minute or whatever, but as you can see, I, I draw, draw the pen quickly. Now sometimes I have to draw very deliberately and very slowly, and that's a different feeling and a different whole thing is sort of different to me to draw slowly and when you draw faster or quickly there is a chance that the ink flow can't keep up with your pen and that generally happens with modern pens but it does not have to happen really with the older pens the older pens generally keep up with me but every once in a while they they skip, and uh, they would skip only at high speeds, you know, when you're really going, I mean, but even that, that's a pretty long line, and it's not skipping. Um, that's pretty darn good. You try that with a modern pen, and you're going to find that that's a problem. Now this one, this is a skyline that has this big sort of rounded ball of iridium on the end. Because of the placement of the iridium and the slit, um, every once in a while it does have a little skipping thing, but I don't know, I haven't figured out exactly why. I mean, part of it's, yes, if I hold it wrong, at the wrong angle, it'll miss. I have to hold it at the right angle the correct angle to make it not do that. Um, but, and even here, it's, it goes fast, and it, well, there it skipped a little bit, and I don't know why it did that. Um, but I'll try to figure it out. But if one draws very deliberately and sort of slow and slow, shorter, lines, you know, that sort of thing won't happen because the ink is able to keep up with the flow. The flow is able to keep up with the pen. But again, drawing fast, you know, there might be some issues. Um, this pen, though, let me just see if I can play around with how the the nib and the feed are, are really what determines the ink flow. Sometimes if you, if you cram both of the things in really, really far, you restrict the ink flow. Sometimes um, having this slightly further in or further out will change the ink flow as well, uh, but you want to make it. You want to make sure that it's not so far out that the when you press down you hit the feed on the paper. You want to make sure that the tines, the feed will never hit the paper. So there's a l little bit of play that you have to deal with here. Um, See if this changed it. It's it's you know this is the 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 playing with the feed is really you shouldn't have to do it yourself if if the person who's putting the pen together um, you know makes it all tight and makes it all work well you should it shouldn't have to be tweaked at your end. But every once in a while, um, I've, I've had especially calligraphers who um, 
end up using ink that maybe clogs and they have to take the pen apart to, to re you know to clean it all out and they reset the nib and they they try it this way and it doesn't work and they try it that way and it doesn't work and then they bring it to me and I put it back together the right way and you know you can learn how to do it as well but it takes a lot of trial and error and um, paying attention and sometimes I can get it right but then I forget how I got it right you know, but I, I think this one just by what I did is making it work better than it was and um, so I'll I'll see if it does I mean the, the pen was working great before but it just every once in a while it, it was skipping a, a beat and I don't want that to happen so tweaking tweaking the nib and, and the, it's the balance between again the the Here's the end of the section right here. Point comes out like that, and the feed comes is like this, and the feed can be moved out like this a little bit closer to the end, and it can be pushed back in further from the end. If you keep pushing it too far back, it won't flow. If you keep pushing it too far forward, it won't work because it'll hit there. So it's a sweet spot of maybe. You know, I don't know how many millimeters that will it'll work perfectly well in both in those those locations. It, it might flow a little bit more in some and flow a little bit less in the other locations. And this is more. Sometimes people want the flow to be wetter and faster because they draw or they write really really fast. Other people, if 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 it was if it was set to be wet, we'll just call it that, and you write really, really slow, you're putting down more ink than you really want, and it's going to take a long time for it to dry. And if I you know, arrange the nib and feed so it doesn't write wet, it writes, doesn't write dry, it doesn't skip, but it doesn't put down more ink than you want it to, if I suddenly start drawing with it, I may end up skipping, causing it to skip. So it is this little tweaking back and forth that has to be done to make it work. And um, it's easy to do for me when I'm using the pen myself. It's a little hard to predict how it's going to work with someone else. Now if they're across the table from me, yes, I can figure it out usually. If they're in another country or I have to send this to them or explain to them over the phone how to do it themselves, it's a little bit harder. But anyway, it's uh, it's if you do draw slowly, if, if one makes a line where you or you write really, really slowly, there's a it's better to have a feed that doesn't give you too much ink because it might give you it might make it really wet and you don't want that if you draw really really fast you might want a wetter nib the idea is you just want you want to make sure there's enough ink right there you don't want the ink back here that's that's not going to help you you want it right there outside of the pen, below the feed. That's where the ink has to be. And um, so you just want to make it wet enough that it's going to make a line when you want it to make a line. Um, this Waterman pen is just a delight. Now I'm using also you know, the paper, there's any number of things that determine how well a pen works. It's the paper, it's the ink, it's the nib, it's the feed, it's the hand that holds it. But uh, this is watercolor paper, which is two-sided, I think. Is it two-sided? One side seems 
smoother than the other. And um, this side is the smoother side. But I was drawing on the on the darker side or the bumpier side, and it was working fine. Um, so you know, look at the speed at which I'm making these lines. If I went to a modern pen store and asked to try out their fanciest Mont Blanc pen and wrote this large and this quickly, I'll bet you a nickel that it will skip. I bet you a nickel. Where's, where's a nickel when I want one? You know, show up a movie of of anyone with a Mont Blanc, a modern Mont Blanc, fill it up the tank and draw as fast as I am. And as large as I am. And show me, zoom in and let me see that it actually completely fills in and there's no skipping. That's a challenge to you. You. Thank you.